So Virgil played at Circo Loco. I'm pretty sure you guys are aware of it because I've, I've spoken about it a couple of times before. I think but mainly because of the DJ equipment he was using. He had a specially commissioned Pioneer uh, CDJ 2000 Nexuses, I think, and a DJM 900 or something along those lines that were made up to be translucent with no logo, no branding, no text, no nothing on any of the buttons or any of the equipment. If you know anything about CDJs or if you've DJed those kind of equipment, you'll know that over time, once you get used to playing on CDJs and on a Pioneer mixer, you get used to the things and the functions that you like to use more often than not, right? So you don't you don't need to like know what the button does or says. You just kind of know what kind of works out pretty program for you. I'm imagining if you're a Virgil, if you're a top DJ, you usually have a rider that specifies the equipment that you need to use, the kind of settings they need to be on for you then to have a good set because there's no time to kind of waste to kind of faff around changing the buttons or putting the cables in the right place and stuff, right? I know that probably is the case. So um, this, but this kind of set, this DJ set or the, the kind of equipment just looked amazing. It looks like something that I would love to see in the stores. I'm not sure if they are going to release them. CDJs in general from Pioneer are incredibly, incredibly, incredibly expensive as it is. Um, so much so that most DJs like myself usually buy controllers and in practice with that kind of stuff home and then hopefully over time the more you get booked in places which any time you get to play on cdjs in my experience or anytime i get to play on cdjs when i get booked in a nightclub or in a bar you get to kind of practice your kind of you know work that you've kind of done in the last few months at home and stuff so um again maybe something that might be out of reach for most people but i think you know uh, pioneer have made white cdjs before right all white ones which weren't that popular i don't really, don't really see them in, in clubs at all you might see them in people's personal collections but i don't really see clubs really having those they always have the standard black uh sets but i'd love to see these in clubs i think in a club like fabric in a club like xoyo no no fabric probably the best one because you can actually see the dj a little bit um uh X Y. I'm not sure about the new setting maybe you can maybe the new one um, Corsica Studios maybe is a good one where well, you can actually see what the DJ is doing like on the table and stuff that might be a good way to go about because especially with the lights maybe Fold might be a little bit good way as well because Fold has got that little thing that kind of covers the DJ booth I think for the glare but if you could actually see the decks and see the actual players it would be quite cool to have in a nightclub having those lights does LEDs light up uh, with all the other lights you have into, in your club I think it would look really cool but in general I think it's actually a good a good motive a good idea just to kind of play a bit of the video because um, a very influential uh, techno electronic based YouTube channel called Fry 909 who I've kind of followed for years I think some of the most legendary videos that I've watched that kind of got me in love with electronic music from the video of Richie Horton playing on the top of that hotel rooftop party and his vinyl skipping but him still being a boss Ricardo Bello Low Boss the famous Magda I Love Parade video loads of kind of staple kind of videos in the techno electronic scene um, Fra 909 has been kind of behind it and he kind of took a video and he's always there um, around kind of the key seasons especially IB for all the key parties I'm pretty sure he's kind of familiar or friendly with some of the promoters and they allow him kind of unparalleled access really in the DJ booth some weeks so quite rare a circle local and IB probably not because there's always scores of hangers on hanging around in the DJ booth but for, for, for uh, more likely than not it's still kind of an amazing job that he does uh, being able to have that kind of level of access to the DJs that he's had access to and he filmed a little video of Virgil playing and there's not much indication you can tell of whether or not he's good or not or whether or not he's doing a good job or what it may be called but i just love the idea thinking about it of a kid watching this now it's kind of like you know how i'm, I'm obsessed with hiroshi fujiwara i think you know um, hiroshi fujiwara and aaron bondaroff are probably the two most foremost people in my head and maybe james jebby and nigo who kind of really framed um, the way that i kind of view my position within streetwear and within culture and how much influence i would like to garner or i'd like to gain um, over the next few years with the projects that i do and the idea of being a creator the idea of not just being a consumer or the idea of trying to be an active consumer somebody is trying to kind of pick away at things that you're buying really question your buying choices and when you find something and when you can't find something that kind of uh, suits your needs instead of complaining and whining on the internet make your own version of it right that's essentially where that's essentially the birth of streetwear right um, james jebbia coming up and kind of an, and even um sean Stussy prior to him right uh deciding that he wanted to make a uh, surfwear a particular way because he didn't like the stuff that was on the market at the, at the moment that was a bit naff that was a bit trite and then coming out with your own brand in, in order to kind of carve your own lane of the market i think that's kind of the best way to go about things right the complaining and the whining about stuff isn't really the best way in my opinion so um 
it's quite cool to see Virgil doing what he's doing with the DJing. The fact that he's challenging himself and putting himself in these weird and uncom- com- compromising positions um, in a position where he's surrounded by people who are 10, 15 years in the game. Martinez brothers are young, but they've been DJing since they were like, what, six years old or some shit. Seth Troxler has been in and around music his whole life. He's come from a long line of musical uh, family, right? I think his parents both played instruments or in bands. His dad had a record shop or something like that. Really, really people that have real strong histories in music and electronic space playing in Circa Local, which is a very unforgiving crowd, right? Um, people that just want to see bangers and big name DJs. To put himself in that, in harm's way is something that kind of really does re- give, you have to give him a lot of respect for. And I think over time, we've kind of seen an improvement because I think, again, with his celebrity or with his name, I think there is a part of it that is mostly based around, you know, him being able to attract a certain crowd. But I think over time, that kind of that kind of stuff loses its value and then your skills become something that's of major importance. And I think the fact that he's able to kind of go in there, because I think I saw I saw some pictures of some Circo Loco off-white merch, which again is a really great tie-in. So the fact that he's able to go in there, provide them with merch, provide them with some very varying level of clout, they probably don't need it, right? Because they've, they've got a long history. Anyway, they probably have people that go to Circo Loco regardless of the line up and they book it year in year out but you know he's able to give them some added merch some added clout in the fashion game bring in a whole different audience and just provide another flavor of what you're going to play which is what i always say about female djs it's not that you just need parity on the lineup what you want is that you want the lineup to reflect the audience right so sometimes just having a woman on the stage brings a different kind of feel and, and vibe to the overall room and sometimes just having the same kind of male voices or even female voices can sometimes make it a bit naff so that kind of democratization of the DJing or maybe inviting new people is something that's very much I'm a fan of and I just think for the kid out there watching this video for the first time and seeing Virgil play at Circle Loco it must be super super inspiring man I reckon so I know for me if I if I was a kid and I was a fan of the stuff that he'd done I'd be like wow you could just you could the amount of stuff that you can do he's kind of you know head of Louis Vuitton menswear Got, has his own brand, collaborates with loads of other friends, creates capital collections, under capital collections, designs shoes, DJs, blah, 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 lectures, has an art exhibition coming up. It's amazing to see, man. Seth Chocolate here, giving a bit of a hug behind the booth. Again, it's hard to tell if he's doing a good job because the crowd is completely dead. Ahsoka Loco, this one, this one they're playing at. Some people are shooting and tolerant, but no one's saying anything. Everyone's just kind of like standing there watching. But it's hard to tell, isn't it, with um, DJs on YouTube. I think it's hard to tell, I think, in some cases. I think if you watch a Boiler Room, recently I watched one with a festival in Belfast or Dublin, AVA Festival. Wow. Like, that crowd goes nuts. But again, it's Dublin, it's Ireland. Those kids probably don't get to see those kind of artists that often unless they're playing in a particular nightclub down the street. So to see that many electronic DJs or big DJs playing in one space at one time, all the kids come out and just about, they want to rave because, again, they don't get that many boiler rooms either. They want to show out for the camera. But that was fun. But these kind of videos, you can't really tell because these are all experienced ravers that go out all the time. But one thing's for certain, those decks look sick. Sick, sick, sick. A translucent mixer and CDJs, like, wow. But yeah, Virgil's going for it, man. He's going for it. And he's dancing too, which is cool to see. Not just being stiffy on the decks. But yeah, I love it, man. I love it. Look at the decks. How interesting that would look. There are some screams I can hear, which is standard. Yeah, but yeah, it looks quite cool. It looks good, man. You can't again. You can't really tell too much about this, so it's hard to judge. I think um, watching DJs on YouTube is similar to that quote about dancing into art- architecture, right? It's just, I don't know, man. It's hard. I think you need context. I think once you've been to a boiler room, once you've been to a circo loco, then you watch a video. It kind of brings it to life more so than just watching it like this. It just feels a bit. It feels a bit naff. It feels a bit try hardy. Um, not try hardy. It just feels a bit naff, right? I don't know because you're not there. You can't really get can't really get with it i think once you've been to one you kind of see it i think for what it is but again as a, again as a set i just i just visually just look at it. it's fucking awesome i love it and just little things again right he, he's wearing a bright neon orange long sleeve t-shirt and playing with translucent cdjs right just goes against everything that you'd see most electronic DJs wearing right rick owens um you know hi there no rick owens um angelus and all that sort of stuff like black all black basically black 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 cdj everything is black so to see some bit of life, some bit of colour in it is something that I like anyway in general. But yeah, it looks cool, man. It's pretty cool. 
He's playing in the Ibiza circuit and all that malarkey. So yeah, interesting. I looked at the video for you in the show notes for you guys listening via YouTube. You can check out for your own self. But yeah, it's fairly fairly interesting to see the, uh, Virgil in that kind of space actually, because again, you wouldn't you wouldn't have thought that when you first started DJing, innit? it was, it didn't look too promising. But again, as you see, as you see, the more t- often you do something, the more you're put in these uncompromised positions where you have nothing to do. You have nothing else. There's nothing else to do but try and get better because you're in su- you're in the room of so many killers, right? You don't want to embarrass yourself. You don't want to let anyone down. You want to give a good account of yourself. You're representing a scene too. There's loads of things that's tied into it. So he's kind of his learning curve is like fucking. <laughs> Yeah, you know I mean, he's learning super, super quickly. And, and again, we're seeing the fruits of it because the bookings that he's getting now are even more uh, frequent than they were before, even though he's kind of, he's, his workflow or his busyness levels are even more than what they were prior to him kind of kind of taking his DJ stuff even seriously than it was before. So yeah, credit to the guy, man. He's doing some good work.